Hi everyone, uh, my name is Vitaly and I'm going to present my work uh, done at BU with my collaborators, Sabir Das and Kate Sayanka. Uh, so RISE stands for Randomized Input Sampling for Explanation and you can think about it uh, as a tool for getting some insights into the model. Uh, so a lot of times working with neural nets we end up wondering why do, why do they do what they do and what are the reasons for their predictions. For example, in this case you can see uh, an image uh, that is classified by some neural nets uh, image classification model as a lion with high confidence. And you may be wondering what makes this image look like, an eye, like a lion to the model. Uh, is it just a lion, uh, adult lioness or the cup contributes as, as much? What about the reflections? Uh, do they affect the model's prediction? And this type of question can be answered by looking at the saliency maps. So saliency maps are just heat maps that visualize what areas of the image are more important to the prediction. Um, for example, in this case you can see that well, actually lioness face uh, contributes the most and all the other parts such as cup and reflection don't really matter that much. Um, so this is not obviously the, the only type of questions you can ask about the model. For example, you may wonder what substitutes a category for the model and you can visualize that using activation maximization uh, or by generating iconic images. Uh, this is also, they also produce images that, that are highly uh, representative of some class. Uh, you can also try to find some neurons in the network that are responsible for certain categories like cars or wheels. Uh, and uh, another option is just to start with more inter interpretable model in the first place so you will get more intuition how the model works by just looking at, at the process of the inference. So all this work can be categorized as explainable AI and a lot of work uh, is being done in that direction. Uh, our team uh, works with, uh, with, with the team at Berkeley and this is just like part of the, of the program. Uh, the program is funded by DARPA, it's called Deep, uh, like our part is called Deeply Explainable AI. Um, so yeah, this is a hot topic now and a lot of times you actually need to see some grounding for the predictions and in this case these explanations come useful. Um, okay, so back to saliency maps, they, <clears throat> they can be used not only in image classification but in any task where you would like to see the relevant importance of the input parts. For example, in image caption, you can still look at the, like what parts of the image are most, more important. In action recognition, you can uh, extend this to video and see what frames and what uh, spatial regions are more important. So even you can work with text and see what words contribute more to the prediction, for example, in sentiment analysis. Um, so a lot of work is being done in, uh, for saliency detection for images. Um, but most of the work was concentrated in the white box model approach. In this case, you have full access to the model. You can see its weights, the gradients, and you can use them for the inference. Uh, but we decided to focus on the black box model approach where you don't have anything, you don't know anything about the model. The only thing you can do is just run the model on the input you provide and observe the output. So in this case, uh, not so many works are there and the existing works have certain drawbacks. For example, slice and occlusion wouldn't work if you have multiple salient objects in the, uh, in the image. You will get bad results. And the second one, Lime, it, uh, it depends on the super pixels of the image, so we cannot highlight any arbitrary regions of the image. So we decided to address that kind of work, focusing on black box models. And the advantage of black box, working with black box models is pretty straightforward. You don't care about the architecture of the model, you don't care about uh, the implementation, or you can even use with proprietary model analyzing them without having actually having the weight. Um, so, okay, so now I will uh, explain our approach. Is the, the main idea is really simple. So we take an image and a black box model that we would like to explain, and we cr create a bunch of random masks, M. Uh, then we mask the image using the set of masks uh, by just multiplying the image with a mask. And we get a set of these uh, like partially occluded images. And then we pass them all through the model and we observe the scores. In this case, we will be observing the scores for shark image. And we can see that 
certain occluded images will get higher scores and while the, the rest of them will get lower scores. Um, so after we've done that, we take the weighted sum of, of all the masks with the produced scores and take this as a saliency map. So the reason why it should work uh, and why it works is that whenever you preserve some important information for the model, like important for the model, um, like whenever the important information is preserved in the image, it will get a higher score uh, from the black box model. And uh, since we are treating scores as weights, uh, this means that the mask will get a higher weight in the sum. So in the end, you will, the, the final, uh, final sum will have more important information uh, combined. And this will highlight the important region of the, of the image. We show that uh, this, this process is equivalent to taking this uh, expectation. So this is basically an expectation of all the scores of randomly masked images, condition that region lambda is preserved. So the saliency for region lambda is computed like this. Uh, and from this formulation, we, we actually take two approximations to get to our final method. So first is that we, we go from sharp uh, masks like uh, you can see below, you have, we have uh, sharp edged masks, so we use continuous uh, for two reasons. First is that we get a more smooth mask in, in the end. And the second one is that we want to get rid of sharp edges in the masked images uh, because they may influence the prediction. And the second approximation is that we don't compute the expectation over all possible uh, masked images, but we, we do Monte Carlo approximation of that. Uh, so just a couple of words how we generate our masks. We first start with a small binary masks of uh, smaller size, for example, eight by eight here. Um, and we upsample them to a greater than image re uh, resolution using bilinear upsampling to get rid of sharp edges. Um, after that, we just crop randomly the image size region to allow some random shifts in the mask. So you, we will not have the pixels corresponding to like certain areas of the image. And then we, we do this n times. In our experiments, we, we made n to, uh, to be around 4,000. Um, and that's, that's how we generated our masks. So now, uh, running, running this process once for, for the model, we can actually get explanations for different classes, not just one. Uh, here you can see an example, and this was, was the model we were working with. And we, we saw by looking at the explanation for the sheep that it's actually learned to categorize only white sheep as sheep, and uh, all the black sheep looked like cows for the model. Uh, so that, that, uh, that's one of the examples where these saliency maps can come useful to detect bias in the models, for example. Uh, okay, so now that we have a method to generate these saliency maps, how do we say if they are good or not? Uh, a lot of previous works actually try to uh, evaluate the saliency maps using some localized metrics by comparing them with the ground truths and seeing how, how well they measure the human labeled ground truth. But the problem is that is it doesn't have to mesh really well. For example, in the upper row you can see that model trained on satellite images learned to capture a shadow of a wind farm to classify a wind farm. So for this class, not only the, the wind farm itself is important, but also its shadow. And if you were to compare the saliency map with just the human labeled ground truth, it wouldn't give, a, give us a high score, even though the explanation, the saliency map is, is quite good. Uh, another ex some example is in the bottom row, where you can see that the area of the stadium that is occluded by the uh, tree shadows is less salient. So this tells us uh, actually that model uh, is having a hard time classifying this part uh, of the field as recreational facility. And again, um, the explanations are good, but they don't align well. They don't align, perf align perfectly with the human ground truth. So that's why we wanted to introduce some <coughs> new metrics that actually capture uh, how well the explanations capture the cause for the prediction. Um, so here you can see the deletion metric. We, uh, we developed we introduced two metrics, one is deletion, the other one is insertion, and we call them causal metrics since they try to capture the, the cause. 
Um, so here you can see the explanation for the class tasker on the left, and it highlights the tasks of, of an elephant. Um, and what, how we, to compute the, the metrics, we start removing pixels from the image, starting from the most salient pixel, then the next one, then the next most salient. Um, and we observe how the probability for the class tasker in this case, uh, we observe how it drops. And uh, we, we start removing pixels until we remove the, the whole image. And after that, we take the area under the curve on the right. So for, for a good explanation, we expect the probability to drop really fast because we would remove some really important parts of the image in the beginning. So the, uh, the curve would be steep and the area under the curve would be low. So for deletion, we want AUC to be lower. And uh, insertion works similarly. We start with a blurred version of an image and we start introducing pixels according to the ascendancy and we observe how the probability rises in this case. So for insertion, we want higher scores. Um, so we evaluated, uh, yeah, the, the line is right there. Uh, for insertion and deletion, we evaluated um, our approach and compared it to previous ones, black box approaches in, and one white box, red cam. And we show that our method worked uh, in terms of these metrics. Uh, it worked uh, the best compared to others. Uh, we tried it, we ran it for two architectures, ResNet 50 and VGG for ImageNet data set. Um, and we also, to compare with previous works, we ran this localization based metrics, a pointing game. Uh, and we see that it actually still outperform um, the other methods for VGG 16 um, and it placed about third for ResNet 50. Um, yeah, we have also put up a, oh, sorry, a demo online. Mm. Yeah, there it is. Uh, where you, so you can go online and see how, uh, like, first of all, look at the explanations and also play around with the metrics to see how they work. You can drag a slider and see how the probability changes when you start removing pixels according to the saliency. Okay, so that's it from me. I would be glad to take any questions. Yeah. So I have to use this in content and teach it for a course or anything or anything else. So usually at the site, we're going to have to have a lot of things to follow. So we need to see if it's versus deduction versus exception. You know, what have you observed with your technique? You know, I guess it's going to come off. Yeah, we observed the saliency map would be different for, for networks. Uh, we, we worked mostly with VGG16 and ResNet. And uh, first of all, ResNet is just more general model. And it's, it, um, we usually the saliency map for it would, would be better. Uh, but other than that, what, what, what discrepancies did you see with different topologies? VGG16 oftentimes makes like, you know, kind of silly mistakes in the way that, you know, segments. One of these exceptions are inception, uh, because the various sets of convolutional filters rather than just the layers. Uh, and actually, there's one more final way to actually segment out objects much better than the GGG16. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I think that's also true in our case. For ResNet, we just get uh, more visually pleasing explanations, and also the, the curves, yeah. the scores are also better for ResNet. It's almost satisfying. I'd say it's a better model, actually, does a better job segmenting, so we actually have, you know, better Right, yeah, yeah, that's what, what we would expect, but explanations actually prove that, that the better model captures more information about the objects. Right, right. And then the second question is that, um, I noticed that when you fill the elephant with deletion, you kind of fill it with the color of the elephant. Um, oftentimes, you know, recognizing visual things, you know, when I use such maps, you know, for example, uh, it will recognize it as a ship because of the, you know, blue background or an airplane because of the blue background. So color has a, you know, a very unique role in determining the class of the object. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Um, but actually, for this image and for the, all the other images, we uh, this gray color is actually a mean color of the image net. So we, when we multiply with the masks, like when we multiply the image with the mask, and when we occlude pixels, we do it in the after the normalization. So we just setting them to zero actually. So this is like a zero color 
and after the denormalization, it gets to gray. Um, and yes, I, I think if, if you change the color, the results would probably change. And also, yeah, all this time uh, you're dealing with questions like adversarial, similar to adversarial attacks, because color would also make the network see some, uh, like make the network look not at the content of the image, but rather at the content representation, like gray color or some or the shape of the occluded blob. Um, so it it would make a difference. But yeah, we, you, you have to go with something, and in this case, we, we went with uh, zero zero color. So because you have to the you have the background in your frame, mm -hmm. you could pick the that the second class might be on first, you know, followed by course or college. You know, you might want to just you know, start talking about your frame and see how much that confuses them. Yeah. Uh, do that too. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay. Thank you.